The average time to graduate from Oregon State University with a bachelor's degree in 2008 was 4.68 years. If the standard deviation is 1.5 years, find the probability that a random sample of 40 graduates from Oregon State finish between 4 and 5 years. This should say finish between 4 and 5 years on average. So we're looking for the average of this sample of 40 to have finished between 4 and 5 years. So I've identified some key phrases here. The first thing is that we're looking for a probability. The second thing is that it's not the probability for an individual student to graduate between four and five years, but rather for the average of a sample of 40 graduates to finish between four and five years. So the fact that we have a sample of 40, which is greater than 30, means we can apply the central limit theorem and assume that this average will have a normal distribution. So if it's going to be normally distributed, we can then apply the bell curve. So I'm going to put my little bell curve tool here to use. Yeah, I've drawn the bell curve now. Let's label its mean and its standard deviation. According to the central limit theorem, the mean for x bar will be the same as the mean for the original data. So I'm going to go ahead and use the average they gave us. They said the average time was 4.68. And then that is standard deviation. If the standard deviation is 1.5, it says. Okay, so I have those two numbers. Now the next step in the process is going to be to label the axes down here. The z axis is centered at zero. We're going to have an x bar axis. That x bar axis will be centered at the 4.68. I'm looking for the probability somebody finished between four and five years. <clears throat> well, four is on the left of 4.68, and five is on the right of that. So the probability that the average for this group of 40 is between four and five years. It's going to be looking for the area between those two numbers, so I'm going to shade them. Okay, so I've shaded the area between four and five years. We're looking for the sample of 40 to have an average between those two numbers. That's why I've labeled this x bar. Okay, now at this point, what we want to do is convert these guys into z scores. So I'll convert four and five into z scores. Using the standard z score formula that we've used in the past, z is equal to x minus the mean over sigma. The only change here is because this is x bar, we'll call it x bar. We'll call this the mean for x bar and the standard deviation for x bar. But keep in mind, nothing really changes, right? The only major difference is that when we come over here and we look at this sigma, we're going to have to adjust it by dividing by the square root of n. So remember, that's a very important step. When you're working with x bar, you can't use the standard deviation they gave you. We have to adjust the standard deviation by dividing by the square root of n. Once we've done that, then we have all these items, basically. The 4.68 is the mean for x bar. The standard deviation for x bar is 1.5 divided by the square root of 40, since the sample size is 40. And then x bar itself is either 4 or 5, depending which one we're converting, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get that standard deviation down to a decimal number that we can just plug right into our formula. So we'll do 1.5 divided by the square root of 40. I end up with 0.23717. So approximately 0.23717. And it goes on and on and on. So I'm just going to round it off there. That rounds off there. That's five decimal places. That's a good number of decimal places. We should be all right if we use that many places. All right, and then from there, let's plug in the numbers. Let's start with the first case, the scenario where we're dealing with five. We're converting five into a z score. So minus 4.68 divided by the 0.23717. So 5 minus 4.68 divided by 0.23717. And the final answer then is 1.35. So as a z-score to two decimal places there, 1.35. All right, let's do the same for the 4 now. We're going to convert the 4 to a z-score. We'll have 4 minus 4.68, and that'll be divided by the same 0.23717. Okay, so minus 0.68 divided by 0.23717. And when we do that, we end up with negative 2.87. So we're rounding that to two decimal places, we get negative 2. 0.87. All right, good. Now that we have those two numbers, the next step is to look them up on the curve. So we'll look up on our z-chart, negative 2.87, to find the area from here to here. And then we'll look up 
1.35 to find the area from here to here. Once we have those two areas, to get the total area, we'll add those two pieces together, and that'll give us the area for the whole shaded region, and that'll give us the solution to the problem. Okay, so let's go to the table now and look up those z-scores. Okay, so we have to look up two z-scores now. We're looking up uh, 1.35 first. So let's go ahead and move the table so we can see the 1.35 row, or 1.3 row. All right, so there it is at the uh, next to last row on my screen there, the 1.3. And then we're going to move over until we see the 5, the 5 up over here. So 1.35 gives you 0.4115. So when we look up 1.35, we get 0.4115, right? Okay, now let's go down to find negative 2.87. We don't have negatives on the table, so of course we'll just look up 2.87. So let's go find the 2.8 row first. That's our first task. So move this up, and there we see the 2.8 row there at the bottom, just above the 2.9 row. And then if we go across there, so we look at the 2.8 row until we get over to 7. That's going to be 2.80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we end up with the result 0.4979. So again, that's the 2.8012345678.4979 is the number we need. Okay, so after looking up our z scores, we get the answer for this piece to be 0.4115, and the answer for this other part here to be 0.4979. Okay, so those are the two halves. Let's add them together then. So we'll do 0.4979 added to 0.4115. Gives you 14, that'll give you 9, that gives you 10, and it gives you 9. So the answer is 90.94%. 90.94%. And the way we interpret this is to say that when you grab a sample of 40 graduates from that university, Oregon State, the probability that that average is between four and five years long, the time it took for those, that group to graduate on average, that probability is 90.94%.